Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. What I'm saying principle. is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Well, okay? Chris, let me respond to that because that's horrifying. You know, Making history for all the wrong reasons. Donald Trump stuns by refusing to say he'd accept the election's results. Putin, from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet. States. No puppet. Just 16 days away from November 8th, the contrast between the candidates is never more stark. Voter fraud, fact or fiction? We ask voters for their thoughts. And House Speaker Robert DeLeo decides to go against the teachers' union and side with charter schools. He's our guest today. Let's go on the record. From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill, today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to On the Record. I'm Ed Harding, along with Mr. Five's political reporter, Jenna Wu. Thank you for joining us this morning. Our guest this morning is the Speaker of the Massachusetts House, Robert DeLeo, a Winthrop Democrat. And great, lift your, do me a favor, lift your left arm up into the picture there. That's Are you okay? Oh. I'm in excruciating you pain. <laughs> Uh, I have a feeling this is going to revisit us later in the show. I, I was trying to address it now, so we wouldn't have to address it. Are you, no, seriously, are you okay? Yes, I have some uh, thumb surgery, a little cartilage issue, a little arthritis issue, okay. but every, every, right, everything good. is fine. Well, thanks for Besides it. Besides the excruciating pain, which may affect my ability I, to participate in the quiz today. Did we see this coming? Thanks for soldiering it? on and coming in this morning. We as well as the flu it. shot, which I received last oh, night. Okay. But I'm not one to make excuses. Okay. All right, let's start with transportation questions instead of medical issues right now. Um, do you think Governor Baker did the right thing by forgiving Keolis more than $800,000 in fines that were levied during the 2015 winter storms? Had a conversation uh, just this uh, past week with some uh, folks relative to that uh, once I had uh, discovered that that happened. Um, and it appears as though, um, with the response given to me, uh, it appears that it was justified in terms of uh, certain reasons that the um, the fines were levied for actually for some items which uh, uh, there was an agreement Keolis was not going to perform. They were going to perform other uh, other duties, uh, so to speak. So 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 therefore, when you consider the the number of fines that Keolis did have to pay, uh, that probably was the right thing. So in other words, your alarm bells went off initially, but then you had a chat with the Baker administration, and now you've decided well they did the right thing. Is yeah. that is that a summation of what you, where, yeah, where things yeah. went? Yeah. Yes, it, it it is. Although I do have to say that. Uh, uh, I, I am. I was very concerned, and I'm always concerned. I think as we're going through the situation that we're having uh, with the T, I think I'm been pleased so far in terms of especially the workings of the control board. I think that we we must uh, make sure and stay uh, on top of things to make sure that there is performance. And, and, and that uh, you know people are getting the service that they deserve. And, and to that point, the MBTA is hiring a consultant firm to, to to find more places that they can privatize. And the Carmen's Union is already up in arms about what's already been taken away from them. Do you think that this is the best way to, to make the system solvent? I think to a certain extent there are some things. Um, on, the, on the other hand, I'm not sure about in terms of going so far as to privatize the workers, uh, you know, the, the, the drivers, mm -hmm. or the train operators. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on that as of, of, of this time. Uh, but I, you know, when we're talking about the situation, maybe relative to the um, uh, money, money management and, and some yeah, other that, things, yeah, yeah. where we have some real concerns about, you know, how it was being operated. Uh, were there any, was there any loss of money? I know mm -hmm. that there being a study done on that, that. Yeah, those types of things I so, am concerned about. But in terms of the com complete privatization of the T, I do not believe not that complete, I would be. Not complete, but there's a level you would, you would well, think I would think be there's acceptable. Well, I think there's a place I think, uh, I, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a place for privatization, mm -hmm. but I also feel that I do not want to see it go too far to the point where it's complete really privatization. Really quickly, automation. How do you feel about automation? As you know, the toll booths are going to be taken down here and within the next few weeks and it's going to be all automated. Do you think that's going to go well? Or you, do you support that? I'd like to see how it goes, actually. Um, you know, our initial conversations with the administration, I think a whole lot of work has been put into it to make sure that it operates properly. I still think that there is some work that needs to be done to see how it's actually going to operate. And um, if the so-called gantries, I believe they are called, are yes. in all the proper places, and if it's, it's a fair system, uh, for everyone, then, then, then I think it's the uh, school's still out on that. Okay, um, Governor Baker's current estimate of the state budget shortfall is about two hundred and ninety-five million dollars. You've said that legislature is not going to come back, at least not for this calendar year. Um, 
Do you think that this estimate is accurate? And do you think, have you started making plans for where you need to cut back once you come back in January? I'm still in discussion with the folks at uh, Ways and Means in terms of the accuracy. The interesting part about this, uh, Janet, is right now, in terms of our benchmarks, we are only about $11 million short in terms of our, our benchmarks. Um, so I'm not uh, so sure. So that conflicts with this other number. Well, I, th I think what the governor is probably considering is what the future may mm -hmm. hold. Mm -hmm. uh, he has heard from various folks, and so has has, has our Ways and Means Committee, uh, some of whom have said that they foresee this is what's going to happen. They've also heard from some folks who said they do not foresee what that's going so to happen. So you think numbers are a little bit aggressive? Well, I, I, I think as of right now, as we're, as we're sitting here today, yes, 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 I do. I'm not saying they're wrong, but as of right now, what I know before me, um, you know, the sales tax may be low, but the corporate taxes are coming in at a higher rate. So uh, I, I'm not sure if we're going to be uh, that far off as predicted right now. So you're right not ready now. to make any lists of cuts at this point? He may be, but I don't, uh, I, I, I would like to think that, I would rather have a more, let's wait and see. Um, I, I think that the governor's right, that in the sense that if cuts are necessary, it's better to do it earlier rather than later. Uh, but I'm not so but certain. But we're not even that, earlier yet, right? But I'm, I'm not sure we're earlier yeah. yet. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Bro. Are you ready for the OTR pop quiz? Well, I, I, apparently no, no, not. See, I, 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 apparently I, I, I not. You can't revisit these I territories. Oh, the pain. Oh, I, I know, the excruciating pain. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have for you the man who put the pop in the pop quiz, <laughs> Speaker Robert DeLeo. All right, question one. Which presidential surrogate clucked after calling Donald Trump a chicken for not releasing his tax returns? Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, you're one for one. See, the pain is not bothering you It wasn't you bad just now. <laughs> it wasn't just bad. Question two. <laughs> a deadly opiate plaguing the Midwest is expected to make its way to New England. The synthetic drug is said to be 10,000 times stronger than morphine, 100 times more potent than fentanyl. It's called carfentanyl. What is it? Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but I will tell you that um, we here in Massachusetts are already doing preparation in terms of it possibly hitting our particular area. So it is the, the latest of con, con, concerns. It started with, with fentanyl. Yeah. Uh, but um, so I think he's trying to tell you he doesn't know the answer. It, but he did, a, he did a nice job of explaining it since <laughs> But I heard about it anyway. Elephant tranquilizer is what it is, oh. which... By, just by that term, it should, start, it should startle you. We continue on the record with the speaker. Stay with us.